Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, last day, we left off by having our two tenors sing their song. One of them is not here today, so I won't make the other one sing by himself. But uh, we did have this uh, quadratic formula. No, nah, it's okay. Anyways, you know the song. And the idea, what I'd like to do today, which was your first question, is let's do a word problem here. And let's use that word problem, set up the equation just like you did in the other sections, but instead of solving by factoring or graphing, let's solve by using the quadratic formula today. So here's the first question here. It says the lengths of the legs of the right triangle. So can you please draw a right triangle here? Okay. And notice one of them is one meter and the other is eight meters less than the measure of the hypotenuse. So if I call the hypotenuse X, I guess one of them is one meter less, one of them is eight meters less, so we'll have the two expressions like that, x <coughs> minus one, x minus eight. And the question here says find the length of each side by first setting up a quadratic equation with one variable, then simplifying in standard form, and then finally solving the question using the quadratic formula. Wow. Help me out, dear friends. What can I do to relate all three sides of a right triangle? Pythagoras is your friend. Let's go x minus 1 all squared plus x minus 8 all squared equals to x squared, okay? There's your quadratic equation with one variable. Can you now try to simplify this into standard form? So remember when I say simplify, expand, group together, all that fun stuff. By the way, don't be like my grade 10s. Don't say x squared minus 1, okay? What should that be? Don't forget. <coughs> Yes. Maybe. Okay. They have tests today in this block. So x squared uh, minus 2x plus 1. Okay. Don't forget to expand this properly. Same thing with the x minus 8. That's x squared minus 16x plus 64. And of course, that equals to x squared. Please try to continue to simplify this on your own. You don't need to do it with me. But it's uh, x squared, x squared, x squared. Well, one of them cancels out. So just x squared minus 18x. And I think this is plus 65 equals to 0. OK? Now, once again, you can solve this using your graphing calculator. You can solve this using factoring. You can probably solve this using the completeness square. But I like you to practice using the quadratic formula. So let's now solve using the quadratic formula, okay? Now, to help you out, the first thing you should always do when you have the quadratic formula, or when you're trying to solve with the quadratic formula, is identify the values of A, B, and C. Help me out. What's A? A is 1, right? The number in front of the x squared term. Good. What's B? Good. Take the negative in front as well, okay? So negative 18. Then C, 65. Go ahead now and sing the song. Sing the song. <laughs> okay. X equals to negative B, right? Plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All over 2A is all you remember? Well, that's... Uh, that's one quarter of the formula. Okay, once you got the formula, sub in the numbers, and let's see what you get. Careful with the negative B, okay? It's negative of negative 18. Okay. That's right, so it's positive. And be careful, it's negative 18 all squared, minus 4 times A times C, 2A. Go ahead and try to simplify yourself. What's 18 squared? What's 18 squared? 18 squared minus 4 times 65. Look at that lovely number inside the square root. Okay. What's root 64? That's just 8. 18 plus or minus 8 over 2. By the way, it looks like there are two answers here, so find both of them for me, please. 
One answer would be 18 plus 8 divided by 2. What's that? 26 divided by 2 is 13. The other one would be 18 minus 8 divided by 2. What's that? 5. And so your answers are what? It says find the length of each side, right? So what are your answers here? Using the first answer of 13, I'll say that star, what do we have? Well, the hypotenuse must be 13. There's the other two sides. Remember, one of them is one less, so the other sides must be 12. And what's the other one after that? 13 minus 8 must be 5. 5, 12, 13, triangle. Gasp. Gasp? Oh, good. You should be gasping at the next answer. Thank you, Bronte. Look at the next one. This one says the hypotenuse should be 5. Okay, so one side is 5. What's the other side going to be called then? Or what's the value? X minus 1 is 4. Good. And the next side after that, 5 minus 8 is? Negative 3. Bigger gasp because no such thing as a negative bad. Okay. Of course. Well, if you plug it into the formula, right? 5 minus 8 is negative 3. What's that? Okay. Now, I hope the usage of the quadratic formula here is pretty straightforward, okay? So what I'd like to do next is just kind of delve into this a little bit more. And I want you to think about this question that I've asked you before already, okay? Let's look at this one here. Recall in section 4.1. I asked you how many roots does a quadratic equation have? And your answer was? Five. Five, if you want to be kicked out of my class, yes? Six. Six, if you want to be even, like, thrown to the pit. <laughs> Zero, one, or two, yes. So, at most, two answers. Remember, you look at the actual graphs. Remember the lovely graphs? Two answers, one answer, no answer. Remember that? Remember those quiz questions? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? So, the question I have for you today is, how can you tell if there are going to be two answers? Okay? I'll say two roots, yeah. Or is there going to be one root? Or actually no roots, okay? And to experiment with this, I'd like you to turn to the next page. And I'd like you to solve these three questions, okay? Let's give you some practice using the quadratic formula right now. Solve them all. Yes. Okay, go ahead, solve them please, on your own. Figure out A, B, C first, I'll tell you, and then plug it into the formula. All right, so here are your answers. Shh, quiet please, okay? And can I sh ask you to notice what happened here? The one in blue, how many answers did you have? Two, so we call this actually two and to be more accurate, we say two different uh, roots, okay? How about the one in green? How many answers did you get there? Yeah, you, you could say this. Some books will say two equal <coughs> roots, which is kind of weird, but... Or you can just say it's just one root, okay? Because there's only one answer, really, right? Or they'll say there's two answers, but they're both the same. They're both four. That's just one answer, yeah. And the last case, what do you notice when I take the square root of a negative number? Yeah, there either you say this, you say either there's no, and I'm going to include a word now, no real roots. Or sometimes people will say these are what they call imaginary roots. And I'll talk about that maybe after the break, just quickly. Uh, for those of you who are thinking of doing maybe some crazy engineering stuff, you'll see imaginary numbers, and I'll briefly touch on that with you next day, but you won't see it until like third year math okay, in university. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the big part for today, okay? Look at all your work from above. Okay? 
ladies, please, okay? Look at all your work from above. And I'm going to ask you, what part of the quadratic equation actually plays the role in the calculation of how many roots you get? Which part makes it so that you get two different or one or no roots? Which part of the quadratic form that makes the difference there? The root stuff. Someone said C. Perhaps C, but I don't think it's just C by itself. Maybe not B by itself either. It's actually this whole part. Okay. Now, which whole part am I talking about? You see this square root part? Because the plus and minus is the plus and minus of a square root. If your square root is positive, look at this. You have how many answers? Two. If your square root is zero, plus or minus zero is still just zero. So therefore, you only have one answer. And over here, when it's negative, guess what? You've got nothing. So the part that plays the important role really is the, and I'll say it's the stuff, and don't use this term, but it's the stuff inside the square root of the quadratic formula. Yes, Vincent. Good. Now, Vincent just said to me, Mr. Lee, this is so long, stuff is so bad. Let's go ahead and describe it. What is the stuff inside the square root? If you look at the formula, right, what's the formula? X equals to negative B plus or minus square root of. Square root of what? Yeah, it's just B squared minus 4AC. So really what I'm saying to you is you need to know A, B, and C. And if you plug it into this expression, the B squared minus 4AC, you can tell if there's going to be two roots, one root, or no real roots. So that stuff is this B squared minus 4AC. And then this is the thing I want you to think about. When the quadratic equation is written in this form, AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0, if B squared minus 4AC, that stuff, is greater than 0, then how many roots are there? Two. Two. Good. I'll say two different roots. And ladies and gentlemen, if it's B squared minus 4AC is equal to 0, how many? Just one, yeah. One root. And if B squared minus 4AC is less than 0, <coughs> then there are no real roots. Okay. Now, B squared minus 4AC, B squared minus 4AC, B squared minus 4AC, that's kind of hard to say. So math people came up with a word that describes B squared minus 4AC. It's not called stuff. Okay, it's called the discriminant. Yeah, you think that would be an easier word, right? Why? Because it discriminates. Ha, get it? It discriminates, it determines which of the three cases will occur. I'm serious, that's why they called it that. Yes, Vincent. This whole thing. You don't need a D. No. Oh, you could use a D to represent discriminant. Yeah, you could. Okay, ladies and gents, let's take a look at example number six. Okay. Tell me the nature of the roots. Okay. I want you to tell me if there's two roots, one root, or no roots. But I don't want you to actually solve it for me. Okay. So I don't want you to actually go ahead and use the whole formula. What's a quicker way of figuring out the roots? I want you just to evaluate this, b squared minus 4ac. Okay? So let's do the first one together here. Help me out. What's b for part a? 1. Good. So 1 squared minus 4. What's a? That's also 1. What's c? Negative 6. Okay, let's evaluate. 1 squared is 1. 4, 6, 24. Two negatives become a positive. 1 plus 24 is 25. Because 25 is bigger than 0, how many roots? Two different roots. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you one and a half minutes to do B, C, and D. What's the result for B? What's the B squared minus 4AC equal to? Zero, right. So with zero, how many roots? One. One. Good. Next one. What's B squared minus 4AC here? How much? Negative 55, which means how many roots? Zero. Right. Zero real roots, or I'll say no 
real <laughs> words. Okay. Last one. What's B squared minus 4AC? Zero. Zero again, which means one. one root. Okay. That's the easy part. Let's do the hard part now. Turn the page. Okay. Remember back on your quiz, I gave you a question like this. Don't write this down. Remember I said, oh, x squared plus, I think, 10x plus k. Remember I asked you then to figure out what values of k gives you one root, zero root, no roots, and you did your graphing calculator, you shifted up and down, all that kind of stuff? Well, now I'm switching the placement of k. Instead of having it at the end as a constant, now the k value is a coefficient in front of the x. Okay? Now, let's see how we can do a question like this. And let's employ the idea of the discriminant to help us out. For two equal roots, what must the discriminant be? Yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Vincent wants me to go back. Which one, Vincent? D? Is it zero? I think it's zero. Check your work. Check your work, man. Okay, back to here. Okay, two equal roots. The discriminant must be what? Two equal roots. Hint, 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 hint. That's one root. Must be equal to zero. Okay. Now, let's do part A together, please. Okay? Seriously, focus here. Help me out. What's B squared minus 4AC? Okay, so it becomes k squared minus 4 times a times c. And you told me this should be equal to 0. Go ahead and solve this, please. What's 4 times 9? That's 36. So k squared minus 36 equals to 0. Go ahead and solve for k, dear friends. k equals to 36. Oh, sorry, k squared equals 36, and then some of you are going to say, oh yeah, k equals to 6, and I will want to, uh, thank you, thank you, plus or minus. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, that one was easy. The next part is kind of weird. The next one I have for you for part B says, tell me what k has to be so that, that this, uh, you get two different roots. So when you have two different roots, what must that discriminant be? <laughs> Greater than zero. Thank you very much. Okay. So, if it's greater than zero, this is what uh, Edison said. Okay, now listen up. This is important. K squared minus 36 then must be bigger than zero. And if you were trying to solve this like this, by the way, watch me first. I'll write this down. And solve this and just leave it like that, you're not right. Plus or negative six? What's that mean? Just negative? Just negative? Positive? Okay. Let's just relax for a bit. Put your pens down, please. Relax, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you something with your graphing calculator. If you have your graphing calculator, you can bring it out and do this with me if you wish. If you don't, that's fine. Just sit there and watch. But I'd like you to actually, e I'd like you to graph out this function, k squared minus 36. Of course, we don't have k, so we'll graph out x. Just write down here, x squared minus 36, okay? And if you press graph with your standard window, you'll get a bad graph, so can you change your window as well? Maybe move my y min to maybe, let's say, negative 40, and hopefully that'll be a good enough graph. Wait, if I drew something on my graph, how do I erase it? Clear it. Oh. You press clear. <laughs> okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I asked you to find the zeros, what would you have done with your graphing calculator? Second calc, 
choose zero, move it closer to one of the endpoints, right? Or not endpoints, zero. Press enter, move over to the side, press enter, press enter. Remember doing all this good stuff? Yeah? So there's six, and the other one, of course, should be negative six. Now, here's my question to you, okay? Watch. Tony, stop talking right now, okay? This is important. You should listen too. When I ask you for something is greater than zero on a graph, which part of my graph here is greater than zero? First of all, up? Up from what? Right? Right from what? Okay, first of all, where is, where is equal to zero? Not just the origin, but if I want the expression to be equal to zero, I'm looking for where it crosses the x-axis. Good. So if I want something that's greater than zero, am I going above the x-axis or below the x-axis? <coughs> above. Good. So here's what I'd like you to understand, okay? And I'm going to ask you now to write this in, because I think the visual representation is important, okay? I want you to understand that this thing here, greater than zero, graphically, graphically I'll say, graphically, that means that you want to see where the graph is above the x-axis. Okay? Now, I also want you to make a quick sketch over here of what you saw. And I think what you saw was a beautiful parabola like this. Okay? And I'm going to ask you to label the x-intercepts as well. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. By looking at this visual graph, which values of the x on the horizontal, okay, give you a parabola that is, or give you parts of the parabola that are above the x-axis? Which parts? Yes. Good. So you see how I highlighted this part? This is the part that Anna was talking about. It's the values where they are bigger than 6. Okay. Bigger than 6. And less than 6. Okay. Okay, this is weird. Do you understand this? No. Okay. <laughs> Once again, listen up, please. Okay. Where is this graph, because I said greater than zero, above the x-axis? And I highlighted those situations there. Correct? So how do I describe those values of k, which give me these two parts of the graph? Well, values of k are really my values of x along this x-axis here. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I want everything more than 6. So that's this expression here. Agreed? And how about over here to the left? I'm going from 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. And to the left of negative 6, that means I'm going less than negative 6. So those are the two regions that allow me to have, in this case, all right, two different real roots. Okay. Now, let me just finish this off and then I'll show this to you visually again to confirm that this is the correct answer. How about part C now? How would I do part C? Part C says no real roots. So what must the discriminant be if it's no real roots? Less than zero. Good. So I'm going to take my k squared minus 36 and now I want this to be less than zero. Now, once again, I'm going to ask you, graphically, less than zero, what does that mean? The graph is what word should I put in there? Thank you. Below the x-axis. Okay. Less than zero means the graph is below the x-axis. Good. Below. Below. Bingo. <laughs> Edison said it right. It's almost the same as B, right? It's the same graph as B. Okay, it's the same graph as B. So we have the same parabola, the same zeros.
but this time because we're looking at where it's below the x-axis we're looking at the graph down here and where is this graph it's between what two values negative six and six so how do I describe that answer that means it has to be between negative six and six okay Now, once you have this, I'm going to ask you to bring out your caffeine calculators, and I want to actually see if this is actually true, okay? All right. So bring out your graphing calculators if you're ready with me, and I'm going to ask you to type in three equations, okay? The first one I want you to do is you choose, okay? You either choose k is 6 or negative 6, okay? The second one... I want you to choose a value of k that's bigger than 6 or less than negative 6. And then for the third one, I want you to choose a value of k that is between negative 6 and 6. Because I want to have you draw three parabolas and sh show me the difference between the three. So let's see if we can confirm our answer now. So let's do this together. Okay. Can someone suggest to me what they would like as the first equation? It would be x squared plus, now what do you want me to use for k? 6 or negative 6? <coughs> 6, okay, we're in the festive mode, we'll, you, we'll be positive, good, okay? x squared plus 6x plus 9. If you are very negative, go ahead and plug a negative. Okay. Next one, x squared plus, now the part b, to get two different real roots, I want k to be either bigger than 6 or less than negative 6, so we want to be positive? 7? 7. Seven. 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 Fine. 7 plus 9. Okay. And then for the third part where C, in part C, it was the discriminant being less than 0. I'm choosing a value between negative 6 and 6 now. Help me out. 0 0.1, sure. 5. I'll be festive. What's a festive number? 25, okay, 2.5, there you go. Merry Christmas. All right. Okay, let's go back to, let's go zoom standard. Let's see what happens. I'm going to do zoom standard. Here's my first graph. One, zero. Second graph, two zeros. Third graph, no zeros. Okay. Yours didn't show up? Go to standard, zoom standard. Zoom standard. Okay, now if I chose other values, dear friends, it should be the same thing. So let's say I go back to my equation. Let's say I'm now in a negative mood. So minus 6x. Actually, what's invalid here? Your dimensions are wrong on your calculator. Okay. I'll talk to you in a second, okay? And then we have minus here. If I were changing them all to minus like this, I think the same thing should appear. First one has one answer. Second one has two answers. And third one has no answers. Same thing. Okay? So I hope the visual representation helps you out. I'm going to help Edison in a second. In the meantime, I'm going to ask you to try number eight, because it's the same kind of idea. So let's see if you can figure out number eight, please. And we'll come back in a second. Now, some of you are thinking, let's just plug it into the whole formula and just get the answers. Why would you want to do more work? How do you show something has two equal real roots again? Two equal real roots means that the discriminant, yeah, equals to zero. Well, what's the discriminant? That's that b squared minus 4ac. So go ahead, identify a, b, c. Don't put it in the whole quadratic formula. Just put it into the discriminant. So what's a in this case? a seems to be the value in front of the x squared term, which is 1. What's B in this case? K minus 3, yes. What's C in this case? Negative K plus 2, exactly. It's all this stuff, not just the plus 2, okay? K is a constant. You've got to keep it with it. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and try to solve this. I'll put it into the discriminant, B squared minus 4AC. Be careful with your algebra, okay? b is k minus 3, so that's that whole thing squared, minus 4 times a 
times c, negative k plus 2. And because the discriminant in this case is supposed to equal 0, I'm making this whole equation equal to 0. Okay. Now, how do we solve something like this? I suggest you expand and simplify first. k minus 3 all squared becomes k squared minus 6k plus 9. And then I'm going to take this whole negative 4 and multiply this by negative k, which becomes plus 4k. And then negative 4 times positive 2, which becomes negative 8. Do you follow? Good. And we'll continue to work on this. We'll group things together. k squared <coughs> minus 2k. 9 minus 8 is positive 1. And now I need to solve for k. What can you do to solve for k? Factor or quadratic formula or graphing calculator, whatever. I need you to solve for k, okay, using whatever method you wish. What do you think is the easiest method in this case? Yeah. If you can factor, always factor first, okay? So help me out. How can I factor this? Two numbers multiply to one. Those same two numbers add to negative two. What would they be? Yeah, just negative one and one. K minus one, K minus one equals zero. So, oh, look at this. What values of K do you have? K just equals two, one. So the only value of K which will make that ugly expression at the top have two equal roots is if you were to plug in k equals to 1 in all of those equations. Okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, last page. Two more questions. Would you like me to do the easy one or the hard one? Hard one? Okay. Let's skip number 9. Let's go to number 10. Which one's shorter? Nine shorter. We do nine. You do nine at home. <laughs> okay. All right, ladies and gents. I know this is hard, but you know what? This is the last thing I'll teach you for the whole year. How sad is that? You can have a party at ten ten. Yes. Okay. Last thing. Let me ask you to draw a picture, please, okay? Have you seen windows like this before? A window is in the shape of a rectangle, okay, surmounted by a semicircle. So this is what it means, okay? Rectangle, and then a little dome on top, okay? And because we're in the Christmas spirit, here's my Christmas tree on the top. Okay. And then here are my candy canes dangling down the side. No, no, let's not do that. That looks kind of weird. Never mind. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look together, please. Okay. Uh, notice here it says the height of the rectangle is 0.4 meters more than the width. So if I call this distance here the width, the height is 0.4 meters more. How would I describe that as an expression? 0.4 meters more. Zero plus, zero point four plus w. OK, so w plus 0 0.4 or 0 0.4 plus w. Good. OK. Now, it says the total area of the window is 10.4. That means it's the rectangular part and the half circle. Those put together give you an area of 10.4. So let me write this down for you, okay? So it's the rectangle area plus half circle area. That actually equals to total area of 10.4. So my question to you now is, let's see if we can come up with an expression for area. You like to do easy stuff first, right? 
Let's do the easy stuff first. Which one's easier, rectangle or circle? Rectangle. Rectangle. So what's the area rectangle then in terms of W? W squared plus four. Okay, I'll go even one step before that. W times W plus four. Okay. All right. Hard part. Half of the circle's area. How do we find the area of a circle, by the way? What's the formula for that? Pi r squared. Awesome. We've got half. We've got pi. What's r in my example here? Half of the w. Excellent. r is the radius, which is just half of the w. Whoa, this looks scary. Okay. Let's go ahead and try to solve this now. Before we solve it, my suggestion always is to expand and simplify group-like terms. So W times W is W squared. W times 0 0.4 is 0 0.4 W. Whoa, what happened over here? Okay, let's leave the 1 half and the pi by itself. What's W over 2 all squared if I want to get rid of the bracket? W over 2 all squared just becomes W squared over 4. Thank you. And that equals to 10.4. Still getting scared here, so let's see if we can simplify this part here. Uh, I'll keep this as w squared plus 0.4w. And then, hmm, let's try to put the half and the 4 in the denominator together. That's what? 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth of a pi times w squared equals to... 10.4. Are you shaking right now? You're thinking, I don't want to do this anymore. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, where are my like terms on the left side? W squared. W squared. So I'm going to have to find a way to put these together. Now, um, because I said round to nearest hundredth, you actually can make this into decimals. I would now at this stage do the following. Okay. What is one eighth of a pi? One divided by eight times pi. Do it on your calculator, you get this, 0.3926, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to round this to actually 0.3927. So I'm going to say this whole thing here is just 0.3927. So if I were to add 0.3927 w's plus 1 w, how many, sorry, 1 w squared, how many do we have? 1.3927 W squared. Thank you. Plus how many W's? 0.4. And because I want a quadratic function in standard form, let's move all the numbers to one side. So let's take that 10.4 and stick it over to the left-hand side. Minus 10.4. And this equals to 0. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now ready to solve for W. So long. Oh. Go ahead and solve for W. Now, in this case, what would you want to do? Solve for W by using what? Quadratic formula? Yeah. Calculator. Use the quadratic formula. Let's use the quadratic formula this time. You can double check your answer with the graphing calculator if you wish. Yes, Vincent. How do I get 1.3927? You see those two things I highlighted there? They're both W squares. They're like terms, so I just added them together. They don't cancel, they add them together. They're on the same side of the equal sign. That's right, just one. Yep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you finish this off, please. A is 1.3927, B is 0 0.4, C is negative 10.4. Plug it into the formula, and let's see what you get. This, and I won't do it for you, but can someone just tell me what the answers are here? I heard there are two answers. One of them was 2 point what? 2.7? 2.8? Uh oh, okay, I better do this. All right. Okay, 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 let's do this. All right, watch please. Negative 0 0.4 plus or minus b squared minus 4 a c 
Uh oh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, can you watch me, please? I think we need help with putting this into your calculator. How many of you did this all in one step? You tried? Okay. Now, if you're afraid of messing up, you can do this in little chunks, okay? My advice to you is to do the chunk inside the square root first if you're going to separate this. 0.4 squared minus 4 times 1.3927 times negative 10.4, okay? That equals to 59.09632. So, sorry, 58.09632 with the square root. Don't forget the negative B in front. That's what a lot of people will do as well, okay? Now, I would then do this next, okay? Square root. which is about 7.622. Now, notice I'm not actually rounding yet, okay? 7.62, what? 209, 4.2. Good, okay? Now, by the way, if you want to simplify the denominator, you can, but if you want to leave it as 2 times that, that's fine. Okay, now, once again, there are two answers, but which one can I automatically get rid of? The negative, right? So really, just take this answer, take the positive part, okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, watch as I put this in the calculator, okay? Now, you see how there's a fraction? Can I advise you, if you were going to do this all in one step, to please put brackets around the numerator and the denominator? So I put a bracket like this, negative 0.4 plus 7.6220942. Close the bracket, because that's the entire numerator. You're taking that entire numerator and dividing it by the entire denominator. So put a bracket as well, 2 times 1.3927. Close the bracket, okay? Press enter, and I got 2.59. That should be the correct answer for W. Okay. So the width in this case is 2.59. The height of the window, I believe, is just 2.59 plus the 0 0.4, which is approximately 2.99. Okay. Yes. You might.